Dropping salt in the US could prevent up to 92,000 deaths and 66,000 strokes every year. It could prevent up to 99,000 Americans from having a heart attack and up to 120 others from getting heart disease every year. That would be a saving of 10 to 24 billion dollars in annual healthcare costs. That's what Americans could save by cutting just 1,200 milligrams of sodium out of their average daily diet. That's actually on par with cutting the number of smokers in half. We know that salt is linked to hypertension, right? And so you might ask, well, if my blood pressure is OK, then is salt OK? No way. It's also linked to a number of other things like stomach cancer, kidney failure, osteoporosis. So it's something we all should be reducing in our diet. We should be aiming for less than 1,500 milligrams a day. Now, one thing I need to talk to people who eat meat is that carcasses are injected with salt to inflate their weight. It's salt water. They're going to weigh heavier. They're going to get more money for that uh, flesh meat. Bacon's preserved with salt, so it won't surprise you if I tell you that bacon, one serving of bacon, has a whole day's worth of sodium, almost. But this will surprise you, so does chicken breast. But most of the salt in our diet comes from this stuff, cheese, the thing we find so hard to give up. Two of the most prominent risks for death and disability is too little fruit. Five million people worldwide die every year because they don't eat enough fruit. But another four million die because they eat too much salt. So we need to avoid processed food because that's how we get 75 to 80 percent of the salt in our diet. And one of those places that we get it is a bread. Can you believe it? One slice of bread can have 200 milligrams of salt. So aim for bread that's got about 100 milligrams per slice. So what are we going to do when we do away with our salt? Won't our food taste terrible? Well, actually, initially it might not taste as good. Replace your salt with fresh herbs right before you serve it. Or you might throw on some toasted nuts and seeds to add that flavour. Now in your cooking, add some dried herbs and spices. Put them in early and then they can really develop in that food so that you've got nicely flavoured food. You might want to add a squeeze of lemon or lime juice. Watch for salt in cans. For example, here we have some beans with salt and these ones, no salt added. The difference is phenomenal. This can without salt added is 30 milligrams and this one, 390 milligrams of salt. So look for your labeling. Another thing is, for example, this peanut butter. This one's the natural, the, the regular one. This one's low fat. So they add less um, oil. But do you know what they do? They add sugar and salt to make it taste just as good. And so you've got the same number of calories. There's a trick. So when you're using high salt foods, use them in small quantities. For example, olives, cheese, soy sauce, capers, condiments, dressings, all those have a lot of salt. You can soak your olives in water overnight and that will draw out some of that salt because they're preserved in brine but just use small quantities. You might want to make your own pasta sauces or your own salad dressings instead of just using the bought ones. And don't add salt to cooking. Now that initially will make the food taste bland, but actually after our salt taste receptors in the mouth adapt and they wake up again because we've been drenching them in salt, actually we become a lot more sensitive to lower concentrations of salt. And then you will actually prefer food without salt. You're going to have to try it before you believe me, right? So if you do add salt, don't put it in the cooking. Add it at the table when it's going to be very fresh on your palate. And remember, if you want to try alternative flavorings, you've got all these things like onions and garlic, tomatoes, sweet bell peppers, all these lovely herbs, basil, parsley, thyme. You can even use celery, smoke flavoring, um, fresh coriander. And remember, if you avoid buying anything processed, or if you have to, make sure that the milligrams of sodium are less than the calories, like this can of pumpkin, where the calories are per serving um, 50 calories and the amount of salt, five milligrams of sodium. Or if there's more milligrams of sodium than grams of food, that's a warning sign as well. So just remember those little tricks and hopefully you can get your salt down and get that blood pressure under control.